Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to solve problem 6.15 as it appears on the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. This question asks us to derive the fine structure formula from the relativistic correction and the spin orbit coupling. Now, these two formulas we already found in previous videos. So the one for the relativistic correction is this one over here, and the one for the spin orbit coupling is this one. There are just slight differences from the formulas we saw. So here I used the En constant, which is the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. And in, for the spin orbit coupling, I already introduced the expectation value of one over r cubed, which was the only thing that was remaining where we had left off. But since in the previous video we solved Another problem in Griffith's quantum mechanics book where we used Kramer's relation to determine the expectation value of one over R cubed. Uh, I just plugged it in here right away. If you're not sure, just go back to the video about the spin orbit coupling and plug in the result that we have from the previous video. All right, so what we want to do here is derive the fine structure formula. And what that means is that we want to combine these two results. So we want to find the energy levels for the fine structure constant which means, oh, sorry, the fine structure in general. Um, and what this means is we want to add together the relativistic term and the term for the spin orbit. Okay, so that's what we want to do. It's, um, it's not really too crazy. So how do we do it? Well, there is one thing that we need to consider. And it is that we are dealing with a lot of L's here. So we have the quantum number L, but we would rather work with the quantum number J. Okay. Why? Because J is simply better. It commutes with many of the Hamiltonians that we will encounter. As I mentioned in a previous video, L and S do not uh, commute anymore with our Hamiltonians, so it's not really that simple. Um, that's why we would prefer to just have everything in terms of J, since it's going to be much, uh, much better. Of course, in principle, you could just leave it as as is, but we can also simplify it much further if we do this substitution. That's why we will do that. So um, remember, recall that J is L plus S, right? Our angular momentum and the spin angular momentum, orbital and spin. Um, and there are two possible values for s, so we can have j equal l plus one half, since we're dealing with fermions, right, with the electron, and j can be l minus one half. So you can choose either one, like whatever. I like to go for j equal l plus one because I, I kind of like plus signs more, but it really doesn't matter. The procedure will be literally the same. There's going to be no difference. Right, you will have some numbers that are different in between, but the procedure itself will be the same. Um, and from I will use this first one, and from here, of course, we can see that L will be j minus one half. Okay, so what we want to do now is just take these formulas and go to the next page so that we can begin um, working with them. So first of all, we can notice if j is L plus one half, then we immediately already have j here. So this is already j plus, this is already l plus one half, so that's j. There we go. The relativistic part um, is done there. There's not, there's no other l that we need to substitute. Um, the spin orbit coupling is a little bit more um, annoying, but it's not too bad. So let's take our time with it. So this is going to be the energy levels squared, this does not mean second order correction, okay? I know the notation can get a bit messy, but this just means energy levels squared times n times. And now let's multiply through, so we get j squared plus j, and then what do we have here? We have minus l, but what is l? From here, we can see that l is j minus one half, so let's put that in. So we have j minus one half, and then we have l plus one, so we get j minus one half plus one, so we get j plus one half. And then we got minus three over four, and in the denominator we have l, which is going to be j minus one half, and then we have l plus one half, 
which is simply going to be j. And then we have l plus 1, which is going to be j plus 1 half. All right, so just plug j minus 1 half here and you will get this. And finally, here we can multiply, right? So this is going to be j squared minus 1 over 4. So we get minus j squared minus 1 over 4, but because of the minus sign that was in the front, we get a plus sign. And here the j squares will cancel out. And this here will also simplify a little bit because we have 1 fourth minus 3 over 4, which is going to be minus 2 over 4, which will be minus 1 half. And of course, since these cancelled out, we can get rid of them. And now notice that we have j minus 1 half. So this is the same as this. So we can also simplify that. So maybe just write the n over here. Right, so n here, and we can get rid of this part. And this is considerably simpler. So let's now plug this into the formula for the fine structure. So basically, just sum these two together. So the first order correction to the fine structure formula, or basically the fine structure formula, right, to, part, to the first order, this is going to be well, if you, if you notice, both of these have en squared over mc squared. The difference is that this um, has a 2. So let's factor out this 2 here. So let's add a 2 here and here. So we're not doing anything illegal, right? These two cancel out. So let's factor out en squared divided by 2mc squared. So here we have still, well, this minus sign will have to go inside. Please don't forget about that minus sign. That is very important. So this will be 3 minus 4n over j. And from this part, we have plus 2n divided by j, j plus 1 half. All right, so this, in principle, this would already be correct, of course. Um, but we want to make sure to simplify this as much as humanly possible. So we are not done just yet. All right, so what could we do? How could we possibly simplify this anymore? Well, there's an n here, there's an n here, there's a j, there's a j, uh, 4 is a multiple of 2. So maybe we can factor out a few things. So let me just take this once again. Put it there. All right, so... Let's now factor this out. So this would be plus 2n divided by j, j plus 1 half. All right, so I'm going to factor this in as well. And what do we have then? So this part is simply going to be 1, right? I already factored out everything else. Then we have minus 2 times j plus 1 half. I need to multiply this by j plus 1 half divided by j plus 1 half so that I can factor it out like this. That's why there is this j plus 1 half. If you're unsure, just multiply this through and you will see that the first term will be the same and the second one will of course be the same as well. All right, so now let's multiply in here. So what do we get? So well, of course, everything in front is still the same. En squared, 2mc squared, 3 plus 2n over j j plus one half and then we have one minus two j minus one wait uh am i correct yes minus one so the ones will of course cancel out so maybe do it like this so this cancels out this and this j will cancel out this one so what does this mean this means then that the fine structure formula will be e n squared 2 m c squared times 3 plus 2 n over j plus 1 half and well and there's still this minus 2 so we have to take that into account so it's actually going to be minus 4 n and this is the formula amazing take a look at this so if you want to find, I don't know, the correction to, um, I don't know, maybe the orbital 4s or whatever, then all you have to do is plug here n equal 4 and 
then the corresponding value of j, which is going to be L plus s, right? So it will depend on what n and s are, but you just plug it in here and you're done. And of course, well, you have to consider the energy levels here, um, but that's it. It's actually, it's an extremely, extremely powerful formula. So you can use this extremely easily, extremely quickly. It's very, very, very good. So if you remember what we had to do in, a, in another video where we had to like manually calculate this every time, this is simply a formula. You go ahead, you plug it in, you're done. Amazing. Um, it's, it's really, really, really useful. So you don't have to do the whole calculations again. So that is how you find this. I hope you found this video useful. If it is, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out a lot. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.